There are nearly a thousand species of acacia or wattle in Australia. We have three on our patch. The most numerous one is Acacia minasi, a black wattle. While native to Australia, the tree was introduced to South Africa in 1885 and described and named after a collector of the type species in South Africa. It is often thought of as a low value tree and in this neck of the woods as a weed a reputation it shares with other countries where it has also been introduced. A quick growing and drought resistant plant, they have lasted for 30 odd years here while producing large numbers of hard coated seeds which are viable for many years. Mechanical clearing of land or fire stimulates the seed to germinate in large numbers and in doing so protects the soil from erosion from such events and shades the soil while the slower growing trees and shrubs are able to establish themselves underneath. In this role it is sometimes described as being a pioneer species. Wattles are also a legume, meaning that they have a symbiotic relationship with certain bacteria which live in nodules on the wattle root system and in return for the sugars produced by the plant supply it with usable nitrogen thus allowing it to grow on poor soils. As the trees age, their bark changes from grey to black in colour, which gives this wattle its common name. And the texture alters from smooth to rough and fractured. The fissures in the bark provide protection for small insects and spiders. During the lifetime, it hosts a wide range of organisms. Interestingly, while wattle flowers produce pollen, they do not exude nectar. The pollen is a source of protein for insects such as bees. Black wattle is one of the few acacias that have true leaves and nectar is secreted from glands located on the stems supporting the leaves. The sugary nectar attracts a wide range of insect life including butterflies, beetles, wasps and ants. The imperial white butterfly larva feed on the mistletoe which sometimes grow on our black wattle. The larvae spin a large silken web over the mistletoe in which they pupate and emerge from as adults. One of the more interesting insect pests found on black wattle is the wattle tick scale. These insects form a large waxy ball shaped scale on the stem and remain in them for their entire adult life. They exude a sugary syrup called honeydew which ants feed on. There are a range of insects including wasps and some fungi that live on the black wattle and due to their activities they irritate the tree to form galls. These growths then become the home for these organisms. Sugar feeding birds such as the New Holland honey eater and the scarlet honey eater feed on the wattle nectar as does the marsupial sugar grider. As the tree ages small cracks can form in the bark which exposes the cambium, a layer between the bark and the wood. This is the living part of the tree and includes a series of tubes through which water and nutrients from the soil and sugars produced in the leaves are transported around the plant. Some of this sap can escape through these cracks and as the water in it evaporates the sugary solution thickens and becomes increasingly sticky and gum-like. Eventually it will become candied like honey and jam when stored. In the meantime the sap will build up on the bark forming fascinating and colourful blobs which can act like both a lens and a mirror reflecting, enlarging and inverting the images of nearby objects. For our black wattle there are a range of destructive insects that use it for a food source that is the wood grubs. We have at least three of these. The larva of the wattle goat moth, named for its odour, 
which is the largest moth we see here. Often in the evening, after a drop of rain, in late autumn, and sometimes on a fly screen door. The larva of a longhorn beetle, so named because of its long antenna, which is the largest beetle we see here, usually found while splitting wattle for firewood. And the larva of the Kalama moth. These are often a lovely pink colour. After mating, the adults of these insects deposit their eggs on the bark from which the embryo emerge and invade the tree. The larva eat the wood, creating a tunnel which is filled in behind them with what looks like compressed sawdust called frass. The Kalama larva feed on the cambium just beneath the bark and the remains of their foraging can later be seen after the bark falls off. These larvae are a food source for the yellow-tailed black cockatoo. While a larva may start off small, after a few years of burrowing through the tree, they can, in the case of the wattle goat moth, become quite large. Despite burrowing deep into the trunks and branches of the tree, they are not protected from the yellow-tailed black cockatoo, who is able to tear the tree apart to find them. This weakens the tree, and with a little bit of wind, branches may fall off. When the larva are mature, they pupate, and emerge in their adult form. When they do, the larval cases can be found laying around on the pile of frass at the base of the tree or protruding from their exit hole in the trunk. This is the end of the road for the black wattle. It dies, the bark falls off exposing the multitude of wood grub holes previously plugged with grass or a web-like material. These in turn now become the home for other insects. The roots gradually rot and a gust of wind will blow them over. While it can, if allowed, become weedy, it does support a whole range of organisms and does have its uses. Historically, the first Australians used it as a food source and a source of medicine, and the white settlers found uses for it as well. Perhaps its most significant use was from the tannins contained in the bark used to tan skins and hides to produce leather. The black wattle was introduced to many countries and cultivated for this purpose. But the adoption of chromium salts as an alternative to wattle bark saw these plantations abandoned and consequently the black wattle has become feral in many of these countries. It has kept me busy removing it from the usable land but left untouched on the steeper bits until this year when a fire consumed it. We have made good use of wattle, feeding to livestock in the cooler months, and it has been a source of firewood, keeping us warm in winter, our water hot, and meals cooked. A weed or a useful plant? I guess black wattle is like everything else. There's a bit of good, a bit of not so good, in everything. <laughs>